Hey guys, it's Michael Kane again with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Professional Realty. Today we're going to talk about objection handling. Whether you're on the listing appointment or setting up and trying to schedule a listing appointment, we're going to talk about how to overcome those objections. Now Tina, I've got to go. I've got a listing appointment to head to. So who are we going to be talking to today? All right. Since you're not going to be here, we're going to bring in our top guys for you. We're going to bring in Jacob Sudnick and Nick Slattery, both multi-multi-million dollar uh, realtors who sell lots of houses for us. So I will go over the four-step process to handling objections, and we'll do a little role-playing with Jake and Nick in your absence. Good luck with your appointment. Awesome. Have a great day. We'll look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks. Hi, this is Michael Kane. I've been selling real estate for over 20 years. Our team of highly skilled professionals, along with our aggressive marketing plan, has sold over 4,000 homes all over the greater Cleveland, Akron, and Canton markets. And this is how we do it. All right, let's talk about objection handling. Now, objection handling for real estate sales is really not any different than regular sales. So if you've ever had any sales training, I think you're gonna find the process very similar to a regular sales situation. Um, remember, don't be afraid of objections. Objections are a good thing. It means that they're interested, that they've, they've, they've got some thoughts, some concerns, some things, because they're interested in the house. It's not a no, or they're interested in hiring you. It's not a no, they just have some questions and some concerns. I will say along those lines though, we've gotta make sure that we don't try to handle an objection that's not really an objection. It may be a condition. And if you get into a condition where, let me give you an example, um, we're not moving, we're, we're not selling, we're taking our house off the market. And then you probe and find out that the reason they're taking their house off the market is because they don't want to move the kids in the middle of their school year. So they've got nine months before they're even going to consider or before they even want to move. So make sure we're handling objections and not conditions. Um, let's see, I will tell you that a lot of our objection handlers are pretty scripted. However, you really can't have a script for every situation, so we have a, a basic guideline of kind of a handling objections 101. So let's go over that. There's just four steps. It's relatively easy. The first one we're gonna start out with is acknowledge. When somebody gives you an objection, you need to acknowledge the objection. You need to listen. You need to really listen and make sure that you understand what they're saying. I wanna make sure that you watch their body language, and I wanna make sure that you never ever interrupt. Also part of acknowledging is restating or feeding back their objection to them. So you always want to restate it back to them so that you fully understand. And as you're listening and trying to understand exactly what they're saying, there's some helpful phrases that we sometimes use. Um, I understand how you feel is one of them. Or that's a good question. Uh, I see how it might look that way. Or another one is simply I agree. Any one of those is fine or you're going to find your own that work out just as well for you. But again, always acknowledge, listen to what they're saying. Second step is ask questions. And you may have to ask lots of questions. Just because their first objection um, is something that you think is silly, for instance, uh, I love this house, Tina, but um, I would never buy a house with pink shutters. Okay, let's paint the shutters, right? Uh, it's not always that easy. There's often more to it. And unless you ask really good questions to find out what their real objection is, you're not going to get to the end of this process, which could be the sale for them, depending on their situation. So make sure we ask really good questions. Um, once you think you've got the real objection, then you want to answer it. And by the way, uh, when you answer a question, I want you to be confident. I want you to be decisive. I want you to be able to give them what they need so they can make a good decision for them and their family. However, that being said, if you do not know the answer to the question, tell them. That's a really good question. Uh, and I know that that's important for you. Uh, let me talk to somebody else and let me get back to you. I'll tell you what phrase I use all the time. And mind you, I've been doing this for over 30 years. I know, I don't look, look at it. Let me talk to somebody smarter than me. Things are changing in real estate daily and I wanna make sure that I get the best information to you so that you and your family can make a good decision, all right? And the last thing is invite action. Once you've gotten over the hurdle or hurdles, and many times there's lots of hurdles, 
and you feel as though this is a great house for them and they're getting excited about it, or they want to sell their house, of course you're the best agent to take care of all of their needs on the sale, right? You have got to invite action. You've got to ask for the sale. You've got to say, is this a property that you and your family would like to live in? Let's get it for you then, okay? Or if you're talking to a seller, you want to get your home sold, they've got strong motivation, great. I can get started for you on this right away. All we have to do, get a couple signatures. And I like the clicky pens, by the way, for that, to get them started and get the signature. All right, so this is the four step process in handling objections. Again, I told you a lot of our guys are pretty scripted. Um, along those lines, I'm going to invite two of our top agents in to show you exactly what they say and what they do. I'm gonna have uh, Jacob Sudnick and Nick Slattery come on up here and uh, go over how they handle some objections. All right, so we have been talking about handling objections and we're talking about handling some seller objections. Uh, let's do a quick role play, if you don't mind, with uh, some of the things you encounter maybe on the phone to get the appointment. Um, when you're talking to somebody, um, we've got Nick Slattery here with us and Jake Sudnick. They are our top guys. Uh, so they've got the, the best answers to these types of questions. Well, Nick, I, I really appreciate you calling, but we're really thinking of listing with a friend of ours. Um, we've got a good friend in the business. Sure, Nick. So you have a friend in the business? Uh, yes, I do. Great. I, and I can appreciate that. Well, don't you think you owe it to yourself before getting committed to a multi-month contract that's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars? Don't you think you owe it to yourself to get at least one more opinion? Well, I hadn't thought of it like that. I mean, it is a big commitment. Sure. Great. Well, let's do the right thing and schedule 10 to meet next week. I have Thursday at 4 or Friday at 5 available. Which one works best for you? I guess Friday at 5 is fine. Great, I'll see you then. Okay, great. Um, you want to switch it and try it the other way? Sure, same one. Go right ahead. Okay. Hey Jacob, you know, I I understand what you're doing, but I have a friend in the business I'm going to list it with him. Perfect, and, and I can absolutely appreciate that, Nick. Did you already sign the listing agreement with them? I did not. Okay, so at this point, you're just promised, not committed, is that right? Yeah, I suppose. Perfect. Now, I'll tell you, Nick, I don't care if you list the property with me or not, but if you're even thinking of interviewing agents for the job of selling the home, you want to make sure that you're hiring the right agent and you don't get burned again coming off the market and not selling, do you? Well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, you don't want that. So let's let's do the right thing. We can sit down for 5 to 25 minutes and I can show you exactly what we do to sell properties. What's better for you, today at 5 or tomorrow at 5? Mm -hmm. I suppose we could be tomorrow at five. Perfect, I'm excited to get uh, sitting down with you then. Great. You know, Jake, uh, this person said that they could do it at 5% you know, due to your commission. And Nick, I can absolutely appreciate that. And I can't do that. So any other questions? Uh, well, if you can't do that, then uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna list with the person who's going to do it at 5%. Okay, gotcha. So you wanna list it at 5%. Now, can I tell you what concerns me about that? Sure, what, what concerns you? The issue that I see is if you're lowering the commission 5%, a lot of times that means that buyer's broker isn't getting a fair cut. And if they're not getting enough of the commission and they're reducing their side, sometimes buyers won't even show your house. Now, you don't want the buyer's agents to not show your house, do you? Well, no, I guess I never thought of it like that. Exactly. So what we want to do is offer a fair commission to the buyer's agents too and make sure that their side isn't getting reduced at all so that your property will get the most exposure and in turn the highest price. You do want the highest price, right? Well, yeah, I think everybody does. Then all we have to do is sign the contract with the full 6% commission. Go ahead, Nick, sign the contract. <laughs> Give me that thing. Uh, Nick, I, I appreciate what you said here, but we can't do a full 6% commission. That, that's just too much. Will you cut it to 5 No. Any other questions? Uh, why? Well, can I tell you what, I, I understand that you want an agent that is going to cut their commission, am I right? Uh, yeah, that's, you know, we want to we want to get the most out of the house. Sure, can I tell you why that concerns me? Sure. Sure, so if this, if this agent isn't willing to negotiate for their own self-worth up front, 
What makes you think they're going to go to bat for you and get you the top dollar for your property? I think you do want top dollar for this property, don't you? Yeah, I, I guess I didn't think about that side of it. Great. Let's do the right thing. Let's sign the contract today so I can get you what you want in the time you want. Wouldn't that be great? I guess it would, yeah. Great. Let's, let's sign the contract. Let's go ahead and start. <laughs> you All guys, right. You guys are easy, right? All right, sounds good. Is there any other objections that you encounter a lot? There's a couple of them here. I really like this wait until spring. I know we keep hearing it. Um, I, I know that's probably more something you do over the phone when you're talking to a client. You do it in person as well? Yes, the important thing is to understand their motivation, the reason that they say wait until spring, and you have to determine whether it's a condition or an objection, because usually there's an underlying objection or condition you can handle it then so it's good it's case by case all right so it's a matter of asking the right questions mm -hmm. right you know jake uh, i like everything you said but i still think i need to wait until spring i got it and you know a lot of people think just like you and sure. you can imagine why right most people think spring's the best time to sell right sure now tell me what specifically is important to you about waiting until spring um well, I, I know more homes sell in the spring, typically. Okay, more homes sell in the spring. Now, as you can see, if you were to wait till there's more homes available for sale, simple supply and demand would tell you that with a lot of inventory, that could lower your price, right? Yeah, I could see that. So if you could sell at a time right now when the inventory is still low and you can net the most amount of the property and actually get what you wanted this fall and still move, would you make the move? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And that's exactly why we need to get together so I can show you how that'll happen. Now, what time is best for you? Tomorrow at 5 or I can do the following day at 5? Let's do tomorrow at 5. Great. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Great. Nick, I appreciate uh, the phone call, but really, I think we're going to hold off until next spring before we get back on the market. Sure. So you're going to hold off until next spring, correct? That's the plan, yeah. Great. And Jacob, what was important about waiting until next spring? Well, we know that homes sit longer on the market this time of year a lot of the times, and it seems like the market's kind of going flat. So really, we just want to <laughs> we want to sell in the best market possible. Sure. Okay. So this time of year, you know, the typically the time on market is a little bit longer, and you want to sell in the best market possible, right? Yeah. Sure. So can I tell you what concerns me about that? Yeah. What would that be? Sure. So. You're absolutely right. Historically, more homes do sell in the spring market. But don't you think that if you're thinking that, a lot of other sellers may have the same idea? I mean, probably, yeah. Sure, so what tends to happen, the inventory, the whole amount of homes available to, uh, the amount of homes available to purchase, that number increases as well. Okay. Does that make sense? I guess it does, yeah. Great. And, do you think that you stand the best chance of getting the best price with more homes for a buyer to choose from, or would you get the best price if your home is the only property on the market? I mean, if there's less homes available, I imagine you could probably ask a little bit more. Great. So let's do the right thing and let's get together. I have tomorrow at 5 or the following day at 5. What works time for you? Tomorrow at 5 is fine. Great. Hey, Jake. Uh, I don't mean to cut you short. Do you have a buyer for me? Hey, that's a great question. And you know, Nick, if we had a buyer, we'd be having a little bit of a different conversation. But what I wanted to find is if we can actually help you get what you need out of this property. Now, is netting the most out of the property the most important thing to you? Well, yeah, absolutely. Certainly. Now, what I want to see is if we can actually get what you need out of the home. Are you familiar with the techniques I use to sell homes? No, I can't say. Um... Well, that's exactly why we need to get together so we can get your net dollar figure where it needs to be. Sure. Now, if we focus on the net and we can get all of those commissions covered up for you so you actually get what you need out of the property, would you sit down with me for five to 25 minutes? Yeah, I suppose it wouldn't hurt. Okay, great. I'm looking forward to seeing you at five o'clock tomorrow if that'll work on your schedule. Great, let's do it. Great. All right, Nick, I, I appreciate you calling, but I, I just, you know, Really, can you just bring a buyer to the property? We're, we're really not looking at listing the house right now. Sure, so you're not looking at listing the house, but you would be open to working with a cooperating buyer agent, right? We're offering 3%, yeah. Okay, great, thank you for that offer. I, I do appreciate that. So if 
what you're telling me is you are willing to pay that 3%. So really we just have to figure out how my services can bring an additional 3% to the table, right? I mean, yes, that's that's certainly part of the issue. If we could if we could make that happen, I guess it would be a possibility. Sure. And did you know, according to the National Association of Realtors, the average home sold by owner sold for eight to twelve percent less than the average home sold by a real estate agent? I was not aware of that. Now. Great. Well, I'd love to get together and show you the numbers and see if we can see if we can make this work. What would be the best time to show you I have today or tomorrow at 3.30? So you're saying that you think that you're gonna be able to sell my property for more than than uh, what I have it listed at? Sure, and I, I can show you exactly how I can do that. Okay, Very cool. I, I guess if, if it would be possible in your schedule for 3.30 tomorrow is fine. All right, I'll see you then. Michael Kane and I would like to thank our top guys for taking time out of their very busy schedule to uh, help us with handling some objections. We'll try to do this more often and get your opinion and get your role plays and we appreciate it. Awesome. Thank, Thank you guys. You Thanks for having me. Hopefully you. it was helpful.